Hi everyone, today we're looking at these from a Casa. They are heatsink and fans. They're called the Vegas Chroma LG and AM coolers. And the basic difference between them is one is for AMD processors, one is for Intel processors. Otherwise, they're pretty much identical apart from a few slight differences due to the socket differences. Okay, let's have a quick look at the boxes before we do that. Let's have a quick look at the prices. The LG model, which is designed for Intel processors, the recommended retail price is $16.95. The AMD version is $15.85, and that's UK pounds, obviously. Price may vary with everything what's going on off at the moment. But here you are, you've basically got them. The boxes look pretty much identical. It tells you it's a Vegas Chroma. LG and the AM. It says addressable RGB CPU cooler for Intel sockets. That says the same but AMD sockets. You've got your multicolor on there. Digital addressable RGB LEDs. Bear in mind this is not an RGB, it is a digital addressable RGB, also known as ARGB uh, fan. So if you want the colorful lights you need to make sure you've got an 5 volt ARGB connection on your motherboard. It's basically a 3 pin connector. Um, it looks a bit like a 4 pin connector but there's one pin missing in the middle so it's actually 3 pins. Um, but that one works on Intel 1150X motherboard so 1151, 55 and so forth. You've got a height on this one of 59 millimeters, and it's got a 12 centimeter fan frame. It doesn't specifically say fan though. Uh, the only difference between the two other than the bits what say AMD, this one says AMD uh, AM4, AM3 Plus is the height. This one's 63 millimeters compared to this one at 59. So otherwise they're identical. This side shows you how to mount them. Uh, so it gives you a rough idea how they're comprised. Should be pretty straightforward. It's usually clips on the AMD and then the in Intel one there'll be a, a back mount which you basically just screw uh, through. This side is basically information for different countries. The other side you've got the full specifications on there again for all the different countries. That side is basically a mirror of what's on the front apart from it's got all your logos for your RGB Fusion, uh, Aura Sync and Razer Chroma uh, as well as the MSI and Azurac, uh, Azurac version. Bottom nothing on them. So there you go so it gives you a rough idea what the boxes look like. Let's have a look what's inside the boxes. Okay, so this is what you get in the AMD box. It's basically a packet of thermal paste. No instructions or anything like that because that's pretty much on the box itself. So it saves paperwork, sort of saves the environment, I suppose. And then you've got the cooler itself. You've got your clips there, which clip over your AMD socket, which is pretty standard. Uh, there's no paste on the bottom because it's there. It's a black bottom, so not very shiny, um, but we'll see how it performs in a bit. You've got your two cables, so you've got your four pin PWM uh, fan connector, and then that three pin five volt um, ARGB connector there as well. The Intel one is pretty much the same, just to show you. The difference with the Intel one is it comes with a back plate and you've got four screws instead of two clips on there. So basically you put that on the back of your motherboard where your CPU socket is, and then you basically put that over and it screws in. Uh, it doesn't come with a screwdriver or anything like that, um, but it should be pretty straightforward to screw in. Uh, you've got holes there, you just put through there and it screws in, and you've also got your thermal paste there as well. Not much to really look at because the heatsink itself is mainly black, as you can see. Uh, again, no thermal paste, not the most shiny on the bottom in all honesty. Uh, it has got a slight ridge there and then goes into the fins. And then you can see the fan itself which is a 12 centimeter fan and the way this works, basically the heat goes from the CPU up into the fan. The fan sucks air down and blows air out the sides um, which can actually help cool down bits around the CPU cooler as well, like your RAM and any other chips as well. Okay, our test setup comprises of an Intel i7-9700KF processor, a Gigabyte Aorus 
Z390 Elite motherboard. We're also running 16 gig of memory, a Seagate Fire CUDA 520 SSD, as well as a few other bits and bobs, which is pretty generic. Um, but the basics is all tests are run in 15 degrees Celsius rooms. All the tests are run for 30 minutes each. The temperature is the average temperature at those tests. So, for example, if one core was 70, another core was 60, the average would be 65. But again, it's the average temperature over 30 minutes and the average temperature of all cores combined. All the voltages are fixed for the testing, so there's no fluctuation, and we make sure that the CPU, obviously, when it is under load, is under 100% load and all cores are being stressed. Uh, we don't test the fans on automatic mode because that sort of defeats the object because if you've got a bad cooler, it will basically run the fans faster to get roughly the same temperature. So we run the tests at 50% and on 100% of their speed. On all tests, the test machine is running the same version of Windows with Windows updates disabled, so there's no differences for any reason with any updates causing problems in the background or differences for whatever reason. That goes for the same for the drivers and all background programs are also disabled so that we can basically test it under a controlled environment as much as possible. Okay, here's the test results. This first test is the idle temperature at 50% fan speed. So basically, the fan is set to 50% speed, and the machine is basically sitting there doing nothing for 30 minutes. Then we take the average temperature, and as you can see here, the Intel stop cooler runs at 26.3 degrees against 23.5 degrees the Acasa Vegas Chroma. So it's nearly 3 degrees cooler um, when the machine is sitting there doing nothing and it looks a lot better as well. So let's have a look what happens when we tell the CPU to run at full blast. That basically means the CPU is running a full blast for 30 minutes. We take the average temperature again. The fan is set at 50% and as you can see here the Chroma comes in at 80.2 degrees against the Intel stock cooler um, is running at 93.4 degrees so you can see that there's a 13 degree drop in temperature and again it still does look a lot cooler. Same tests again but this time we are running the fan speed at 100% and as you can see here the Acasa Vegas Chroma drops in temperature quite a bit and is running at 20 degrees uh, that is 6.3 degrees cooler than the Intel stock cooler so that's pretty good going and again this is while the machine is sitting at idle so it's basically doing nothing uh, in the next test we'll have a look and this one is basically the cpu load is at 100 percent so the cpu is you running as fast as it can and um, constantly and the fan speed is also set at 100 percent and you can see here the acasas vegas chroma comes at 67 and a half degrees which is not a bad temperature compared to 81.4 degrees on the intel stock cooler that's nearly a 15 degree difference in temperature so that's quite a vast difference these tests, you can see the fan noise in decibel levels. Uh, the room temp, uh, sorry, the room decibel level is roughly 44.5 decibels. And as you can see, the Acasa at 50% fan is running at 45.5, and with the fan running at full whack, it's at 54.3. Uh, in comparison to the Intel stock cooler running at 100%, the fan is running roughly four decibels lower than the Intel one. So overall, what do you get for 20 quid? Well, you get a cooler which cools your CPU down better than the Intel stock cooler you would normally use, or generally compared to the AMD cooler, depending on the cooler you're testing it against. Not only that, it looks hell of a lot better than the Intel stock cooler because you've got that RGB lighting on there. So as long as you've got a motherboard which has got a 5 volt RGB or an ARGB or a digital RGB, depending on what you want to call it, socket on it or a controller you can plug this into, then it's going to look pretty good. Bear in mind if you don't want the RGB lighting on, you can turn that off in your software or on the controller or possibly just not connect the cable to the motherboard and just use the 4 pin fan connector on your motherboard to power the fan. 
And again, all this is for under 20 quid. You may ask, well, why should I bother upgrading them to this? Well, if you're on a budget and you want something to look nice, well, this is probably what you want to go for. It's going to run your computer cooler, which means it's going to make your CPU last longer in general. Uh, it's also possibly going to make your per uh, processor perform better because when processors get too hot, they can slow the cells down. It's called thermal throttling. No, it's not going to give you the same sort of performance as a big Be Quiet cooler or an, even an Arctic cooler or even a water cooler or something along that lines. But none of those are going to cost you 20 quid or less, uh, and this does. So if you're on a budget, you're looking for something that will make the machine look really good, but also gives you a bit of better performance, or at least better cooling performance uh, than the standard Intel stock cooler, then this is the thing to go for. And because of that, we recommend this product.